Calypso tent that had real pedigree too. Who could forget Calypso spectacular on Henry Street? Where true, true, true Calypso fans they would meet to get you my political and social commentary. And they also give you music to party. I love Hamba, oh, I love Hamba, oh, I love Hamba. Great minds discuss ideas I learned from small. Small minds discuss people all day, that's all. So when they come all day and they disrespect, oh, oh, they're just exposing the size of their intellect. Tell them they could this, they could jump in me. Hit me with the negativity. I won't give up. around we right here on ttt good morning and welcome to the now morning show you can call me rockers this morning i'm alongside i Inca will who is already pointing and laughing why are you pointing and laughing you rabbit, can rabbit, call rabbit. me rockers i'm very I took impressed your note. i took your note and that was that of a uh, fire officer pay i believe it yeah I not necessarily you. mine because you are rockers and i <laughs> am i Inca will rabbit rabbits happy first of july yeah boy second oh, yeah. half of the month we need second half of the year yeah sorry the second That's half, right. of, the second half of the year, first day of the month. Wow. June said, hey, what's the scene? Bye. <laughs> so, time to make it right. And we are actually in hurricane season. Exactly. And we have yet another adverse weather alert that's happening at a yellow level. So this morning, we want to check in with the on-duty meteorologist at the Met Office. Mr. Gary Benjamin is on duty this morning. Good morning to you, Mr. Benjamin. Yes. Good morning. A pleasant good morning to you, your viewers, and also your listeners. Oh, you're um, I just want how I'm all right. I just, at the Met Office. I, I'm okay. I just want to say that um, I am taking the interview. Um, I'm not at the, the Met Office at this time. The on-duty meteorologist would be doing the, would have been sending out the 6 a.m. forecast and doing other things like that right now. Ah. So I'm taking the interview. Okay, okay. Ah, okay. All right. Well, we're grateful to have you on. Can you give us a quick update as to what's going on with this adverse weather alert that was issued yesterday for, for 5 a.m. this morning to 5 p.m. this afternoon? Okay, um, there's a tropical wave just about approaching. The axis is just about on the east of, of the island chain. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago is just to the southern tip of the foreleg of that tropical wave. It is not really a strong tropical wave, but we are seeing developments closer to Barbados and higher up than Trinidad and Tobago. Um, but we were put under a yellow label a yellow level alert because we expect um, cl some cloudiness to take place and there's the chance of thunder showers developing. Now it is already developing to the, some um, showers is already ongoing to the eastern areas of Tobago and we expect that there is a possibility for some thunder showers to develop today also over Trinidad so that um, we have today being um, cloud, cloudy periods with, with some showers, and there's a chance of the thunder shower, and more so over Tobago. All right, nice. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Benjamin, for giving us that quick update there. Uh, we appreciate it, and we'll be checking in with you guys as much as we possibly can to make sure that we continue to inform the nation as to how the weather is looking and how the forecast is, is, is looking as we head into the weekend. Okay, thank you. No problem. Take care. All right, take care. That's Mr. Gary Benjamin, a meteorologist at the Met Office. This morning, uh, he's just touching base to let us know, basically, walk with your umbrellas today. Yep. Walk with your rain boots. Today uh -huh. is going to be a wet one. It possibly can be. If you're in Tobago, you're probably already feeling the brunt of that. But for the most part, it's now something we should be far more familiar with. I thought it was odd that people were so excitable about the yellow alert that we were under post-tropical uh, depression notice. 
a yellow alert still means mm -hmm. you can go about your business as usual. Well, you just need to be cautious. Yeah, but remember, they said that there were like three of them lined up back to back when they made the the when they had the press conference on Sunday. There right. were three of them lined up back to back, uh, not as severe, not all the same severity. Right. So this one that is not as severe for us at least mm -hmm. um, is just going to it's going to cause some some rain. It's going to cause some wind. It's going to probably cause some flooding as well if you are in areas so prone. So I urge you to do what you need to do to make sure that your your house and your, your property is secured and that you are safe and secured as well. Make mm -hmm. sure you pack it to go bags. I know you packed it the other day. Leave it packed now. Mm -hmm. Like you could just leave it packed Keep for the rest trunk. of the season. Yep, yep, yep. Safe that way. That's a safe than sorry. You know, today is, today is July 1st. Mm -hmm. SE results are out today. And actually, I'm excited. Yeah? I think that this group of students experienced, well, not think, but they absolutely experienced an entirely different SEA than any other. Mm -hmm. A preparation process like no other. And they therefore deserve all the support, all the applause, and the relief of knowing mm -hmm. the fruits of their labor so that they can move forward. Parents as well, and teachers alike, because they would have been as involved in the process. And I look forward to all the good pictures and the smiling faces. I look forward to see what the results show the this year. Dinners. Because of because <laughs> of how the last two years have been. Mm -hmm. Like I know that the children would have been under a different kind of stress and preparation process. Agreed. Um than they would have been than teachers even would have been accustomed to giving them before. Mm -hmm. So I, I I'm curious as to what the results are going to be. What are the statistics going to be if it's going to be any different from years gone by. Right. If it's going to be if we see out performances in the genders yeah, changing. If yeah, anything of the sort. Anything of the sort like mm -hmm. that. But you know, I want to say good morning to all of the students who would be uh, receiving your results today and also to the parents. Parents, spread, spread, <laughs> whatever the results are, you will move forward. Yeah? I know the students are not going to be as, as anxious about it as the parents are. You think so? But parents? Mm. And right. if you need some tips on how to navigate that, the Ministry of uh, Education has actually issued some tips for the transition between the deadlines and the results mm -hmm. and even, of course, giving you some guidelines as to how to access them because they are digitally available. So you can visit the Ministry of Education's website for more directions on that one and we will continue to update you throughout yeah. the show as well. And for those of you who don't know where to get the actual results, it's moe.gov.tt mm -hmm. uh, forward slash SEE2022. Right. So you can head across to the Ministry of Education's website today. I believe the results will be out and you can access them uh, using your, your, that portal. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we have a lot in the show today, but before before we get into what's happening today, did you see that the, the Police Complaints Authority uh, issued a statement regarding the situation that took place in Rich Plain a few months ago? They your say face. it's an abuse of your power. <laughs> they say it's an abuse of power. No, no, it's it's very interesting for me because I remember that day explicitly because I was trying to leave Diego Martin and this barrage of police officers like fly by and pull up in the road and stop all traffic basically uh, because they were searching for this person who they were saying killed a police officer. A person of interest. And to find out now that it was his colleagues who actually killed them, whether by accident or for spite, whatever the case is, right. and then purposely misled the commissioner of police at the time, the acting commissioner of the police, in order to basically start a war on a neighborhood, looking for this man who they say killed this police officer. The height of ridiculousness of that is not new. That's the challenge. That is the biggest thing. I think this is the first time it's been on earth. Like I don't know been, if it's the first time. Been, been publicly I don't know if it's the first time, but it, has, it hasn't happened in a long time. The outright admission or confirmation that it was his colleagues is a game changer. And that therein has many ramifications, not just for us in terms of the citizens, but for the police force itself. And for the processes for that the, are involved, mm -hmm. because it can't be that the commissioner of police goes to war with the nation or with a community based on one report uh, rather than proper investigation maybe which I understand. is interesting because it should be that it's it's not one report that there is proper investigation and it should be that he can he or she can rely on the word of ah the police. this is where the challenge lies is how can we how, how do we rely on the word of the police officers when we find them to be lying sometimes how do we know who are the good ones who are the bad ones i mean we are re expected to and required to just to trust that they are here to protect and serve right and most of them are you know most of them are. So good morning to all of the good police officers out there who get up every day, put on a uniform, but you take it seriously. You mean what you do, and you do it with the best of intentions. Good morning to you. But the others, the rogue ones, 
I don't know, boy. We'll be on to you. Yeah, to boy. <laughs> Do better, man. Things going, to, things going to have to change. And I hope that we, the citizens, hold them accountable and follow through on, well, follow up, rather, yeah. on these changes that are necessary. I saw the citizens of uh, the, 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 the people who live in residence. That's who I'm looking for. <laughs> the residents of Rich Plain right. were calling for an apology. Mm. Because, you know, you, you say that you're going to war with this community because the community hiding the man and this mm. and that and the other. And At the very fact, least. And in truth and in fact, they were, you know, trying to get out the truth. And, mm -hmm. and they were trying to get out the truth about the situation that happened. They were saying the police is saying this man had a gun. He had no gun. Right, so in the first thing. instance, whether he's a, a, a public menace or not, in that situation... Facts are facts. Facts are facts, right? Mm. And you can't, you can't do what was done based on just hearsay and rumors. Mm. It's like the whole protest that happened based on a rumor. What's up, workers? All you have to do better, too. <laughs> what trouble is this? How it is you have the unmitigated gumption to come on people TV <laughs> and say, well, I don't have no proof, but I hear that they might be doing this. And on this stage, a whole protest by it. Well, that's how we function as a society, nah, man. clearly, nah, man. because it happened. This is, nah, not, this is not hearsay that the protest happened. It happened based <coughs> on hearsay. And hopefully we'll be able to inform the public and the wider Caribbean as that continues to be something we will also monitor. But for this morning's show, we are going to give you a little bit of goodness, a little reason to smile as we have guests who will be joining us via Zoom to tell us how they are flying the Trinbago flag in a positive way Definitely. internationally. And we have quite a few of those, actually, mm -hmm. this morning. Which is why I said a few. <laughs> yeah, some from the States. We even are going to find out how people working with Africa. Um, we also have women standing up to make a difference uh, in their industry. I'm not going to tell you any more this morning. You have to stay tuned if you want to find out more about it. And we have a fun reason to let you know that's happening tomorrow as well. So I implore you to please stay with us for the morning. I ain't is here. I'm here. Uh, Kimberly's not with us this morning, unfortunately. But... We say cheers to you. I know your weekend will start on Tuesdays. I now understand what you mean. Ah, boy. We take that break and we come back with more. Stay tuned. Okay, Kimberly. The Dunamis Experience is a weekly presentation of the Montrose New Testament Church of God. It is Central Trinidad's fastest growing Pentecostal church. Here the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified and the congregation Edified. Pastor Hussein's weekly messages are powerful and anointed. Why not visit us and experience the difference in our worship services? Our church is committed to building your faith, your family, and your future. Whether wet or dry season, hazards can strike without warning, causing you or your family to quickly evacuate. You may not have the time to grab the essentials. Be sure to have your grab-and-go bag in easily accessible locations. Here are the top seven categories that should be included and tailored to your family's need. 1. Non-perishable food items, water and utensils. 2. Please aid kit and extra medication. 3. Personalized items. 4. Change of clothing and comfortable footwear. 5. Copies of important documents such as birth papers and certificates. 6. Cash and small bills. And 7. Tools, safety items and equipment. For more information on how to be ready, visit odpm.gov.tt. A message from the ODPM. First is more than just a place at the top. To be first, you need determination. Passion, commitment, compassion, resilience. These are the values that make us first citizens. First means leading with technology. First is the power to achieve your true potential. First means putting people above all else. Today, we are growing across the region. And the best is yet to come. Share in our success. We are pleased to announce the offer of additional shares by First Citizens Holdings Limited. Visit firstcitizensgroup.com for more information. First Citizens, we put you first. Today we are in Arima, all right, the corner of the Eastern Main Road and Becker's Lane. You'll need to check it out. Natasha's Beauty Spa. So we're going to be chit-chatting with Natasha and, of course, her business associate, Miss Khalifa McAllister, the founder and, of course, the owner of Island Goddess Products. All right, now this is an interesting line of skincare that 
you're going to be interested in. Of course, my name is Junior K. You know what I mean? So we're going to have some fun. Understand the ladies. They're going to be probably giving someone a facial. Somebody just might get a massage. We're going to see who's getting their hair done or whatever the case may be. Show me where you're representing TNT to the world. This morning, we're going to feature some of our international influencers right here on the Now Morning Show inside your spotlight. Or now, Ayanka has your spotlight this morning. Check it out. So, you may have grown up with uh, Ric Flair in some cases, or some of you may have smelt what The Rock is cooking. Now, generations who are entertained by the wrestling world might have the chance to meet Trini Dan, joining us via Zoom this morning, all the way from Texas in the US, Mr. Daniel Williams, professional wrestler, AKA Trini ja and Dan, <laughs> joins us on the Now Morning Show. Mr. Williams, good morning. Morning, morning, morning. <laughs> yes. And as a true Trini, you say morning more than once. I love it. <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Well, we're excited to chat with you because the viral videos of you coming into the wrestling ring bubble into her eyes at Trini by Benjai had to hey. be a sight for anybody taking in the matches. And so we need to know your story. Who is Daniel Williams and how he ended up whining into the wrestling world? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was born, born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago, um, Diego Martin. And at the age of five, I fell in love with professional wrestling and I always had these stories. My mom told me I used to go to bed scared because some of the wrestling characters scared me as a kid. But besides that, I was still entertained and I still love the, the WWE and I still love that entertainment aspect of it. And from that day, I decided to become, to become a professional wrestler. So I made up, I made a path of going to college and then from college in the US, I decided to sign up for a wrestling school. But the journey wasn't always, you know, one smooth sailing because in 2015, I was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis, which is basically a muscle depleting disorder. So one night I went to sleep with my eyes normal. I woke up the next day, my eyes were boom, crisscross. So that put a little damper on the journey, but the journey was still strong. I still had the faith. And then a few months after my eyes got normal, the, even though the cardiologist, they told me to stop wrestling and they told me to, you know, stop chasing this dream. Hmm. And I told the doctor, I was like, no, this is the dream since I was five. I'm chasing it. I'm going to do it. So once my eyes got back normal and my heart got back normal, I chased the dream. I end up training at Highbridge School of Wrestling in San Antonio, which is a brilliant school. The training mm -hmm. program is excellent. And then from there, I was contacted by the WWE to work one of their shows in Kansas. And then, well, the rest is history. <laughs> Now, tell me a little bit about that actual experience, because what a lot of people don't understand is that it's not every day that you get the chance to actually be in the ring. The process is a little bit, uh, dare I say, circumstantial almost. So that yes. call had to have been life changing in many, many ways. But tell me about the yeah. emotions, the process they're in, and then the journey to the actual battle where you were picked up like a rag doll. I was watching and <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> confused but tell me more about it well it it was very was good unexpected because it was a wednesday night i was getting ready to put on netflix you know i was going to chill and then i got a message on my i got an email it's like hey can you be in kansas on friday mind you this was wednesday night i'm talking like 10 p.m and he wanted me in kansas on friday which is in two days and kansas is about a 12-hour drive Mm -hmm. from San Antonio. So in my mind, I was like, 
I mean, it's WWE. You can't really tell them no. So I'm right? like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I'll be there. But I had no idea how to, how we're going to get there. So I contacted some of my wrestling buddies and then we drove up there like, I think 10 p.m. on Thursday because we had wrestling training. So we drove up there 10 p.m. on Thursday and call time was 12 p.m. Friday on for SmackDown. So we drove up there and we reached about 11 a.m. on the Friday. Hmm. And then from there, we got in contact with the producer and then they wanted me to work with the, the wrestlers. Originally, and this is the... The funny part of the story, originally, it wasn't supposed to be me. The, the, um, the guy chose two other guys. And then, for some reason, he saw, he saw my gay and he saw my attire. And he was like, you know what? I want that guy. And then... <laughs> the feathers. They switched with, yeah, it's the vibes. <laughs> he saw the vibes. And he was like, nah, that guy has vibes. Let me put him on. So, it ended up being me and my partner. And then we went in there. And our goal was to entertain the crowd. And you know, that's what we did. That's what we went out there to do. And hopefully I represented Trinidad and Tobago well. And yeah, we did it. Well, so far so good. But I have to ask, because it's not necessarily part of our culture. It's very much an American thing. We partake mm. of it in terms of viewing. But why was it very yes. important for you to make sure that they knew you were from Trinidad, even though you had been very much living in the States and very much could have gone with any other name or any other song turned to the ring. Yes. Um, well, I'm very proud, like very proud of my culture, very, very proud of Trinidad and Tobago. I'd be blasting soca music all the time. And in the wrestling scene, like you said, there's not really that Caribbean influence. There's not really that, that Trinidad and Tobago vibes. Mm -hmm. And that right there makes me different. I have the accents. I have the the vibes, I have the, you know, the waistline. So that right there, I decided to package that to create that Trinidad character. Right. And because my name is Daniel, and then it's Trinidad, so I was like, Trinidad. Makes sense. So <laughs> I just, yes, and I just wanted to just showcase our culture worldwide and let everybody know that Trinidad and Tobago is here to stay <laughs> and here to take over. Eh, eh. <laughs> All right, tell them. Well, uh, tell them. before we take over your, your social media, I noticed that <laughs> you actually do quite a lot of posts from the accents to the, the foods to the dance moves. So if somebody wanted to follow you, what are the handles we can use? What is next for you? And when is the next match? <laughs> okay, so the handles on Instagram, you can follow me at, at the Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, you can follow me at just Trinidad. Okay. And um, in what is next for me, actually, I'm going to be in Trinidad and Tobago on July 31st. It's going to be a big Caribbean wrestling match, wrestling okay. show, I should say, on July 31st at the Woodbrook Youth Facility. It's held by the All Caribbean Wrestling Facility. And we're going to be there live and direct. All right. So, Trinbegonians and everybody else can get a chance to actually meet Trinidad then. Yeah. And also, just to go on the record, I just want to say that I am going to be the first ever Trinidadian, Caribbean-born WWE champion. Ooh, you heard it first here on the Now Morning Show. Daniel Williams, yes. no relation, professional wrestler <laughs> based in the U.S., representing Trinidad and Tobago in the wrestling ring well till your next fight mr williams i wish you all the yes. best i want you to work on our waistline because i find the moves a little subtle show them what we could really do and we'll check in with you, see, you at that time, later this year my back, my back? back was hurting mm. at that time so. all right so mm -hmm. the next time all right <laughs> we'll, we'll send some snake oil <laughs> have yes. a fantastic morning thank you very much for joining us and continue to do us proud thank you thank you i will thank you Daniel Williams there. I'm sure this morning somebody, some little boy is saying to myself now, all right, mommy, that fireman dream, forget that. I'm going to be a wrestler again. And if it inspired you, we're doing our job. So stick around. There's much more information, much more inspiration, and much more on the Now Morning Show, your Friday edition with me, I am Kowal, Rockers, and the team. Stick around, guys. Kids are
home and dbesttoys.com is having a summer kickoff sale. Summer kickoff sale. Your kids can have a blast this vacation with the latest toys, games, electronics, baby items, bikes, pools, hoverboards, and more from dbesttoys.com. dbesttoys.com. Visit our store at Forces Flagship Mapin from Friday, July 1st to Monday, July 4th to kick off the summer with huge deals and discounts. Shop from the best brands like Hot Wheels, Barbie, Nerf, Kent, Encanto, Intex, Fortnite, Carters, Coco Melon, Fur Real, Leapfrog, VTech, Learning Resources, Little Tykes, LOL Surprise, Paw Patrol, Polly Pocket, Gerber, Kitcraft, Graco, Baby Trend, Jurassic World, Fisher Price, Kindy Kids, Lego, and so much so more. much more. Save big on any of our summer kickoff sale items in store only. Call or WhatsApp 312 Toys for more information. Kick off your summer the best way at thebesttoys.com. Thebesttoys.com. The Ministry of Sport and Community Development invites you to the Artisan's House with These Hands on July 8th from 12 noon to 9 p.m. The National Academy for the Performing Arts will be transformed into the ultimate craft market. You don't want to miss this. The Artisan's House will offer a wide variety of craft and entertainment. Come support our local craft industry. Buy local. Visit the Ministry's Facebook and Instagram pages for further details. Courtesy the Ministry of Sport and Community Development. of the wizards and sparrows young brigade they say that is where true calypsonians were made southern brigade and kitchener's review calypso tent that had real pedigree too who could forget calypso spectacular on henry street where true 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 calypso fans they would meet to get you my political and social commentary and they also gave you music to party We are going beyond the headlines, asking the questions you want answered. Joining us this week is the Honorable Faris al Rawi, Minister of Rural Development and Local Government. Join us this Sunday at 7 p.m. on TTT, TTT Live Online and Talk City 91.1 FM. We are delving deeper. Welcome back inside the Now Morning Show, 35 minutes after 6 o'clock. And if you're looking for something to do this weekend, we want to invite you to a night out at the theatre. And I want to welcome this morning uh, from Chandelier Productions, Miss Tiana Chandler, and musical director of a Theatre Night Out 3, uh, Michael Hudlin. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Now Morning Show. Now, tomorrow night we have in a Theatre Night Out 3, mm -hmm. Un Petit Dui. Yes. yes that's Forgive correct. my French if it's not perfect, <laughs> right? However, this is the third one. Yes, yeah. it is. Tell me about how this whole thing started. When was the first one? So the first one was actually the launch of Chandelier Productions mm -hmm. way back in 2015. Way back. <laughs> yeah, just, just a few BC. years ago. BC, before COVID. <laughs> before, before COVID, COVID. exactly. <laughs> so I launched a company in 2015 with Theatre Night Out, and I had always intended for this to be the Chandelier Productions flagship concert. Okay. And so, of course, that meant it would always be more than one. So... Um, a few years later, in 2017, we were able to do the second edition at the Southern Academy for the Performing Arts. Mm -hmm. And in a post-COVID world, <laughs> <laughs> of course, we need to bring back that flagship to the stage. And we are here with the third edition. We are happy to return to the Southern Academy for the Performing Arts again, as, of course, we are a South-based company. Now, you said it's a, it's a concert. 
It is. It's a musical theater review. <laughs> A musical theater review. Now, musical director, Mr. Michael <laughs> Hudlin, explain what that means to us, please. Right. So, a review is uh, it's a form of musical theater, but right. it's not a full-length play. It's okay. not like a, a, a show that was put together by a, a librettist and a composer to create one cohesive story. Um, a musical review tends to have scenes or skits that surround one song or a few pieces. However, what we've decided to do is kind of enhance the musical re uh, theatre review genre, and instead of it just being miniature scenes or vignettes, as, we, um, as right, they're sometimes yeah. called, um, we decided to make one long story. And we've added songs to enhance that one story. So then what's the difference between that and a musical? Well, we didn't that write the music. That's a fair question, <laughs> but it is not original music, but okay. it is an original script. Yes. Okay, so it's original, it's an original script. Yes. And uh, music from other musicals. Yes. That's correct. Okay, so you're using the other music from the music from other musicals to create one story that we're telling. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the story about? It is a Trini love story. Love those. The good ones or the bad ones? Uh, you know, we have plenty love stories in general. Because we have characters that everyone can relate to in this show. It mm -hmm. is set right in the heart of Palmy's Park in San Fernando. Eh, eh. Yes, so Not we the have park with the lovely poetry trees. It's uh, right. Yes. We have some drama in the park. <laughs> <laughs> so we have makeups, breakups, and switch arounds of couples. So there is there switch is a around bit of, of drama. You realize in this that. is morning TV. We are, what are we discussing here? <laughs> we are discussing the realities that some people experience in fair, their own so relationships. That's and fair. as I said, there is someone that everyone can relate to. Now the name Un Petit Nui. It's French for a little night? That is correct. Mm -hmm. why, why that name? Well, all of this drama mm -hmm. in Palmy's Park is happening on one little night. <laughs> it's date night Make at Palmy's Park. Make up, break up, switch around, all that thing in one night? <laughs> all kind of thing. Palmy's Park, hot! Palmy's Park <laughs> date night is going to be fiery tomorrow night at Sapa. All right, so Michael, tell me some of the pieces that we can expect to hear uh, being performed. Yeah, so we're doing some new musical theater pieces so rent we have a few pe we have one or two pieces of rent which we have ones, some which ones? i love rent it's like my favorite musical ah, like i don't want, i don't want to give away too just much give one, just give them one just give them one just give them one that's a lot <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we're, 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 we're starting this show we're starting this show with rent and it's okay. a big it's a big fiery piece that sets the tone for the show i mean based on where time i figure out songs is already but mm. go ahead <laughs> good <laughs> we keep that between us. Exactly, yeah. that's our secret. <laughs> and then we, we also have some pieces from J. Evan Hansen. We have, then we have some stuff by Rogers and Hammerstein, and then everything in between. We have some stuff from Phantom of the Opera, Cinderella, all oh, of nice. the above. All right, and who are some of the people that we can expect to see performing these pieces? Yes, so our main cast, everyone in the cast is a soloist, but we have, of course, you have the leads and the supporting cast. And we have Isaiah Alexander, we have... We Victoria have Kevin Griffith. Humphrey, Victoria Griffith, Gabrielle Allen, we have Stephen Bellamy, Noel Archer, help me. <laughs> uh, Daniel DeCraney. Daniel DeCraney Pear. And Misty Ann Knight. Yes. Okay. So that rounds out our cast of eight people. And I mean, you realize it's an even number. <laughs> <laughs> Date night in Palmy's Park, mm. as we said. And the, task is ex the cast is extremely talented. I mean, our rehearsals have just been. Woo. I can imagine. Is that, is that a live band as well? Yes. yes, it is. And have you made any alterations to the actual music itself? Are you allowed to do that? Allowed to do that? Well, you know, sometimes <laughs> when, you're, when, you're, when you're using certain musical pieces, yeah. Like yeah. you have to stick to a particular Yes, model, that right? is true. But um, when we say alter, it's not anything major. Most of the time, it'll just be like the key, or we just change something here and there to kind of suit what we're doing on okay. stage. Yeah. Okay, all right. So the, none of the real, like, the arrangements... <gasps> Well, really? we, we did arrange one of the pieces. We okay. did arrange the last piece because the last piece is originally a solo, but you can't right. end the show with a solo. It right. needed to be <laughs> a chorus piece. So I did the arrangement for All that. All right, nice. I, 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 was I was wondering as well if we, if we are able to take some of these international musical pieces mm -hmm. and, you know, Triniize them, Trini, Trinirize them. I don't know if that's the right word. I know exactly what you're trying. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying, and that is that is very much a possibility. That's something that's done all the time, mm -hmm. very is. much so. And we can expect that in this show as well. I will be honest with you, no. Okay, no. No, that's fair. That's fair because you're, you're presenting it as it as it were. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, how much are tickets? 
So yeah, tickets no. are $250 for adults and children 12 and under are $100 because, of course, with all the back and all, the show is still family friendly. Mm -hmm. So everyone can come out. All the kids, the adults, auntie, grandmom, everyone could come and they will enjoy the show. And where can they get tickets? Tickets are currently available online at chandelierproductionstt.com. Of course, you can also buy tickets at Sapa today between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And our box office opens tomorrow at 3 p.m. straight down until showtime at 7.30. Nice. And um, we see some of these soloists here uh, we feature, that you're featuring in the show. Yes. Um, Tiana, tell me something. As a producer of musical events of theater in general, <laughs> the last couple of years, how, how has that <laughs> process been for you? Um, challenging. If I had to narrow it down to one word, um, of course, as someone working in the creative and entertainment industry, of course, we felt the brunt of the lockdowns mm -hmm. a lot harder than some other industries. And we were actually still able to do three productions in yeah. the last two years, nice. which is a blessing in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, we started back in 2020 for Christmas with And On Earth Peace returning again in 2021, just around Easter with For Faith and Music. Mm -hmm. And just earlier this year, we launched our 2022 concert season with The Pursuit of Greatness, which happened at Queens Hall. Nice. So now we are back with our San Fernando audience because, of course, we are a South-based company. Right, Both right. Michael and I are from San Fernando right. as well. And we are at the Southern Academy for the Performing Arts for a show that, again, is very special to me because it, it is the flagship of Chandelier Productions. And it's happening for one night only, which is the 2nd of July. Only. That's I, I've realized that in, in Trinidad Theatre, we tend to do shows for more than one night. Mm -hmm. Is there any particular reason that we're deciding one night and that's, that's it? Well, coming out of the pandemic as well, um, we know there are people that are still apprehensive of going out mm -hmm. and, of course, financial constraints of, of individuals as well they may not be able to always come out as they would have before yeah so we we keep it smaller and of course we still want to make sure that our audiences have an opportunity to see it even if they don't make it in person so we've been able to make a move to do virtual showings of of our productions online okay. on our website so we are hoping to continue that trend mm -hmm. with this production but not uh, live, it's going to be after. It will be a delay right. at, at a later point after we've recorded, packaged, and make sure that the experience we created in person mm -hmm. can somehow translate to our online audiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I imagine that's going to be an interesting task that you have ahead. Well, it has certainly been interesting for the last three times that we have done it, mm -hmm. and this time will be no different. But yeah. of course, it's a process that's very important to make sure that everyone can enjoy the magic of musical theater. Definitely. Well, guys, if you want to enjoy the magic of musical theater, you want to head down to Sapa tomorrow night. The 2nd of July showtime is what time? 7.30 sharp. 7.30 sharp. And you know in theater, it'll be later. So all your try your best. Be there on time. You have to make sure you be there by 7 o'clock if it starts in 7.30, okay? That's be seated right. and ready to go at 7 o'clock. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning and all the best tomorrow. I know it's going to be fantastic. Yes, thank, thank you. you so much for having us Not this morning. Not a problem at all. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiana Chandler of Chandelier Productions and Michael Hudlin, musical director of Theatre Night Out 3, Un Petit Nuit, happening tomorrow night at Sapo. You want to be a part of it. We take a quick break. We come back with more inside in our morning show. Stay tuned. People of God, I invite you to join me on Know the Truth, a Christian faith program dedicated to bringing the truth of the Bible, the truth that will heal your soul, that will help you in everything in your life, because the truth is needed. So join me on Saturday, 8.30 a.m., and on Sunday, 10.30 p.m. I am Pastor James, right here on TTT. At TTT, our journalists are on the ground, seeking the facts and reporting on the people, events, and issues that affect your life. We have Trinidad and Tobago covered. From Cedrus to Charlottesville, Crown Point to Maruga, our news reaches further on any smart device. TDT News, first at 6.30 p.m. Follow us on social media at TDT Live Online. And for the latest updates, log on to www.tdt.live. TDT News, committed, accurate.
relevant. TDT News, nightly at 6.30. Kids are home and DBestToys.com is having a summer kickoff sale. Summer kickoff sale. Your kids can have a blast this vacation with the latest toys, games, electronics, baby items, bikes, pools, hoverboards, and more from DBestToys.com. DBestToys.com. Visit our store at Forces Flagship Mapin from Friday, July 1st to Monday, July 4th to kick off the summer with huge deals and discounts. Shop from the best brands like Hot Wheels, Barbie, Nerf, Kent, Encanto, Intex. Fortnite, Carters, Coco Melon, Fur Real, Leapfrog, VTech, Learning Resources, Little Tykes, LOL Surprise, Paw Patrol, Holly Pocket, Gerber, Kitcraft, Graco, Baby Trend, Jurassic World, Fisher Price, Kindy Kids, Lego, and so much so more. much more. Save big on any of our summer kickoff sale items in store only. Call or WhatsApp 312 Toys for more information. Kick off your summer the best way at thebesttoys.com. Thebesttoys.com. Welcome to a special look at a truly amazing steel orchestra as Massey Trinidad All Stars celebrates 85 years through the eyes of Panorama. My favorite Panorama song from All Stars is Cory. A banker. You can jump high, you can jump, you call it a banker. The morning show continues here on TTT, and I am Ayinka Will. Many of you may know that that is an African name, and so it gives me great pleasure to now take you between Nollywood and the Caribbean. We are joined by the co-founder and director of Laniup Consulting, Mr. Sean Valley, who's going to tell us a little bit more of how we're bridging that gap, so to speak. Good morning and welcome to the Now Morning Show. Good morning, Ayinka. <laughs> Good morning, Gerard. And Well, before we get into it, I just want to say my heartiest congratulations to the entire TTT family for how you guys have successfully revamped this national institution oh. over the past couple of years. I mean, I grew up watching Dominic Calipasar on Panorama, so this mm -hmm. is a huge full circle moment oh, for wow. me. Oh, I can yeah. imagine. Especially since you are bridging a gap between the continent of Africa mm -hmm. and the Caribbean. It's a big feat and we need to know how it's happening. So let's get Greatly into it. Greatly appreciate it. Well, basically, so just to take it back to the start, um, one of my closest friends here in Trinidad is a Nigerian doctor by the name of Dr. Oti Esima, Oti Esimaje, mm -hmm. who has been living here since the early 2000s. So back in 2012, 2013, thereabouts, we were just having a conversation. And one of the major news stories coming out of the business world at that time by like Forbes, Economist, etc., was that Nigeria had just surpassed South Africa to become the largest economy on the continent. Right. And this um, dynamic was expected to continue mm -hmm. over the next 20, 30 years. According to the United Nations, the World Bank, etc., okay. the economy of Nigeria's economy is now like the 23rd or the 24th largest in the world and expected to crack the top 20 by the latter half of this decade. Mm -hmm. And basically, uh, on that um, theme, Dr. Oti and myself were having a discussion thinking that, you know, it might be a good time to start exploring the feasibility or options of establishing a trade corridor between West Africa mm -hmm. and the English-speaking Caribbean. Okay. So, based on that premise, we started making some initial inquiries, doing our research to find out what was the best way to go about this dynamic. We started establishing relations with the Nigerian High, High Commission here in Trinidad 
and then our high commission over there in Abuja mm -hmm. and other couple and just making contacts, etc. And what we decided was that their creative sector or their media and entertainment space, also referred to as Nollywood, mm -hmm. was where we decided we would want to initially plant our flag, so mm -hmm. to speak, then. Now, Nollywood is the third largest film industry in the world based on market value. I think the entire industry as a whole is worth just under 10 billion American dollars. Mm -hmm. And in terms of actual output, it is second only to Bollywood. I think they produce like over 2,000 mm -hmm. movies that a year. That I can yeah. believe. Yeah. 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 That I can believe. Mm -hmm. And it was basically only, um, like we say, um, within this, the industry as a whole has been around since the early 20th century. Mm -hmm. And then prop since the post-2000 era, mirroring the continent's economic rise and takeoff trajectory, the, the industry has developed um, to a certain level now, right. more sophisticated production te techniques. Mm -hmm. Some of the uh, some of their best players are now starting to become more well known. Basically, I like it like Nollywood in the 2010s is the equivalent of say Hollywood in the 1930s when you mm -hmm. saw production companies like MGM yeah. and Warner Brothers now starting Coming to come up. to the up right. and raise the production value. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And over the course of the next 20, 30 years, the industry is is, is poised. For an exponential takeoff. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we become part of that conversation. Exactly. And basically, when I was talking to some of my contacts in the Nollywood space, what I was telling them, and thankfully they agreed on, is that as Nollywood looks to expand its global footprint and geographical foot footprint, having a mainstream presence in the English speaking Caribbean could be of key strategic value to that dynamic. Mm -hmm and thankfully they were of a like mind. So basically, around this time last year, mm -hmm. I was asked to give a virtual presentation to the Real Time Film Festival in Lagos. It's one of the biggest film festivals in the world. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest film festivals in the world, so which let's say it's one of the biggest film festivals in the Nollywood industry, yeah. okay. about the perks of bridging the gap between Nollywood and the Caribbean. Thankfully, um, that presentation can be found on YouTube, actually. Right. So, Basically, after that presentation, which was fairly well received in the industry, we kept in constant contact with the um, RTF. Mm -hmm. And as a result of those continued discussions, I'm very happy to announce that in late January, we signed a co-production agreement mm -hmm. with, um, the re with the result, hoping over the next couple of years that several, several co-productions between our two in between Nollywood and the Caribbean film industry which will result from that. Mm -hmm. With the first being hopefully later this year, which will feature a combined cast and crew from both Nigeria and Trinidad and Tobago and will be filmed both here mm -hmm. and in Nigeria ah. on, on, on that front. We actually have a script that is being written in the work by Asha King, okay. uh, a local filmmaker mm -hmm. whose previous successes include um, a movie called This Love, which did very well at the local cinema circuit. I think I was uh, in that movie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> look at that. A couple, a, a couple years ago. Yeah. And then another movie that went straight to YouTube called The Prodigal Son and has last count amassed over 250,000 views or nice. somewhere. Nice. Uh, so, uh, some, uh, so, somewhere so there about. seeing where the gap is bridged, we are expecting productions, uh, you said, as early as late this year? Uh, at the latter part of this year, we actually, the script, sh the script should be finalized hopefully by the first week in August, and we actually hope to begin filming and shooting both in Trinidad and Nigeria by hopefully September, October, thereabouts. What are some of the challenges that you've encountered so far in terms of navigating the two spaces? Because I know that we have our own uh, <laughs> politics mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. the Caribbean when it comes to the industry. And I imagine they have similar politics when it comes to the Nollywood industry. How, how, have, how has the process been navigating the two industries? Well, basically, it's a very, very good point you raised there. And it just reminds me of a quotation that I came across while, like, while doing research to this from none other than one of my favorite actors of all time, Denzel Washington, when he was giving the commencement address at a graduation ceremony a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. If you hang out at the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you will get a haircut. <laughs> so, so basically, <laughs> so, ba so, so basically, like all of these things, it's just if you map out a long-term game strategy, which yeah. is how we approached it. 
all of the little micro setbacks and some of the nuances you just factor that and okay that's just part of the game mm -hmm. and you just continue pushing forward so you just i don't want to say a tunnel vision but you have a long-term game focus and this was like a 15 20 year game plan mm -hmm. right. that we're hoping to implement and like i said um even though the media and entertainment space is our primary focus of this trade corridor mm -hmm. we are hoping to eventually expand so that um any any companies from the english-speaking caribbean that are looking to gain access to the west african market mm -hmm. space we will be able to help like facilitate that and vice versa because like i say the 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 goal is what i refer to the acronym i call it is WATSI, which is an acronym for the west africa trade corridor mm -hmm. okay. which i'm hoping to um to establish to that and uh, based on that front i also have to give special commendation to our high commissioner based in Abuja, His Excellency Wendell Delandro, mm -hmm. because he has been a tremendous support throughout this entire process. I can nice man. Well, I'm, I'm happy to hear that we are starting to make these moves and that they come into fruition because it's one thing to have a dream. Mm -hmm. It's a whole other thing to reach out and start mm -hmm. to make it work. But then to get to this next stage where you can say, all right, we have this agreement signed mm -hmm. and we can now benefit from it as in our creatives can work alongside international creatives from Nigeria to be able to say, I think, I think that the cultural exchange for mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. is going to be mm -hmm. a learning experience for everybody who's involved and then to, to see it expand. I personally can't wait. I'm excited about it, Sean. Thank you very, very much. And I also have just one more piece of news for you. Well, I, it won't be breaking news because I announced it on, a, on another station earlier. Mm -hmm. still this week. Nobody didn't watch anything else. It's all right. <laughs> but basically, like I said, so based on this dynamic, the, um, the 2022 edition of the Real Time Film Festival, which will be held in Nigeria from August 19th to the 27th, is going to premiere for the first time... Um, a movie which came out in the Caribbean a couple of years ago, uh, which I'm sure will be well known within the creative space, Bazodi, mm -hmm. featuring Not our yeah. our Soka Crown Prince, <laughs> Marshall Montano. So it's for the first time Bazodi is going to be premiered to a Nollywood audience base right. and hopefully see if we can get it to enjoy a cinematic run in that ecosystem as well. This nice news man. was confirmed late last week, around this time last week. Yeah. Nice, man. Well, congratulations. I look forward to see the reviews afterward because, you know, Likewise. that movie, I think it did pretty well in, in, in um, Bollywood, Bollywood as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, it's, I'm excited to see what happens in Nollywood because, you know, Marshall is Marshall. Obviously, Anywhere he goes. obviously, <laughs> obviously. Well, Sean, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning and I want to say congratulations again to you and the team that's been working on this and all the best going forward. Thank Thank you very, very much. I just want to uh, say a special congratulations to my nephew, Jaden Duncan, mm -hmm. for passing for his first choice, St. Mary's College. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, of, yeah, so, so I, <laughs> that, it was the first thing I saw when I woke up this morning because his dad, my cousin, sent me a WhatsApp message, so I just had to shout him And that's a great way to start your day. And you should, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you should. On that note, guys, <laughs> while you guys chit-chat about the alumni that has now joined, <laughs> we encourage you to stick around as we have much more that you want to tune into here on the Now Morning Show. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome to the 53rd General Assembly of the Caribbean Broadcasting Union from August 15th to 17th at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Golf Resort in beautiful Tobago. This year's theme, Media and Information Literacy. Tobago is a smaller sister in the twin island republic of Trinidad and Tobago, nestled in the heart of the Southern Caribbean. Enjoy 116 square miles of historical sites and award-winning eco-friendly land and marine spaces, including the magical Nylon Pool. And you're just a ferry away from a Trinidad adventure. Our warm hospitality, rich cuisine and unique traditions will inspire you to extend your stay. Tranquil Tobago is where the Caribbean connects for the 53rd CBU Assembly. To register and enjoy discounts on Caribbean airline flights, visit www.caribbroadcastunion.org. Come and experience Beyond Ordinary. Have you ever experienced an unexpected power outage? The Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management has some important and simple tips to help you and your loved ones be better prepared for a power outage in the event of a disaster. One, Ensure that you have candles and extra torch lights as alternate sources of lighting. 2. Keep fully charged power banks to recharge your devices. 3. 
Use hand-cranked radios to receive updates from official sources. 4. If possible, keep a power generator or AC inverter that can be connected to a car battery to use as an alternate source of power. 5. Ensure your grab-and-go bags and home emergency kits are packed and ready. The ODPM wants you and your loved ones to be better prepared. For more information, visit www.odpm.gov.tt. A message from the ODPM. Kids are home and dbestoys.com is having a summer kickoff sale. Summer kickoff sale. Your kids can have a blast this vacation with the latest toys, games, electronics, baby items, bikes, pools, hoverboards, and more from dbestoys.com. dbestoys.com. Visit our store at Forces Flagship McBean from Friday, July 1st to Monday, July 4th to kick off the summer with huge deals and discounts. Shop from the best brands like Hot Wheels, Barbie, Nerf, Kent, Encanto, Intex, Fortnite, Carters, Coco Melon, Fur Wheel, Leapfrog, VTech, Learning Resources, Little Tykes, LOL Surprise, Paw Patrol, Holly Pocket, Gerber, Kid Craft, Graco, Baby Trend, Jurassic World, Fisher Price, Kindy Kids, Lego, and so much so more. much more. Save big on any of our summer kickoff sale items in store only. Call or WhatsApp 312 Toys for more information. Kick off your summer the best way at thebesttoys.com. Thebesttoys.com. Friday morning and you are watching the now morning show I am Ayanka Will and this morning even though it may be commonplace to not play in flooded waters we do want to explore the dangers of to make certain that in this hurricane season we the citizens and everyone in Trinidad and Tobago remain safe to do so joining us via zoom we have Dr. Saeed Rahman the director of veterinary public health in the Ministry of Health Dr. Rahman, good morning. Hi, good morning, Ainka, and good morning to listening public Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much for joining us, because with the onset of the hurricane season, flooding is an issue, and safety continues to be a challenge with health specifically, especially in the pandemic. So tell us why, to begin first and foremost, what are the dangers therein? So as you mentioned before, um, perennial flooding is a problem in Trinidad and Tobago, especially during the rainy seasoning, which we are in now. And as a result of that, there are a lot of public health concerns concerning flooding. Um, waterborne diseases uh, are common during times of flooding, particularly things like um, E. coli, salmonellosis, um, as well as leptospirosis as a disease that affects humans and animals. We also have vector-borne diseases, such as increase in dengue because of breeding mosquitoes and the like. Right. Now, granted that we haven't had any sort of outbreak of uh, those specific items within recent times, would you be able to statistically still say when those things happen, when we do have floods, for example, with the last dengue outbreak, what sort of numbers have we in fact experienced in the past? And what are we at risk of experiencing in the future with the onset of the pandemic? Well, because of our past years with the pandemic and our concern with what was happening with coronavirus, mm -hmm. um, a lot of attention was not paid to actual case numbers for mm -hmm. dengue and the like. But we continue to have cases of dengue fever and we continue to have cases of leptospirosis and other diseases gastrointestinal diseases are very very common post flooding and so those things continue to happen every year and we continue to see them in the clinical environment and that is why the ministry of health is promoting good food safety water safety habits um, and also preparedness before and after flooding so it's very very important for us to recognize that these diseases can affect us and our families. Some of these diseases, like leptospirosis, for example, can penetrate our softened skin. So playing in 
uh, recreationally in floodwaters can put us at risk of developing leptospirosis. And these diseases can be fatal, can cause mm -hmm. severe damage to our kidneys or liver. We also have foodborne diseases like salmonella, cholera, and E. coli 0157.87 particularly are very, very debilitating to young persons and older adults. In fact, um, E. coli 0157 has been shown to cause hemolytic uremic syndrome in young children and is something that we need to protect our families for. And that is why we are promoting as the Ministry of Health practices to ensure that we do not um, ingest contaminated food, contaminated mm -hmm. water, or play recreationally or otherwise in flood areas. Then let's get a little bit of that preparation perhaps that we can do before anything happens to make sure that we are taking the best route. Let's talk some prep steps that the public can take to guard against any sorts of health risks. So many people know that every year they are affected by flooding. And so as a result of that, one is in the early stages of building and to construct their houses in a way so that it eliminates flooding within their living environment. Sometimes this is not possible. So in terms of preparation, we advise that you get waterproof containers to store your foods, move your appliances, especially things like refrigerators um, above the flood level so that they are not affected during flooding. Remember that food is very expensive and is a very perishable item. And if it is contaminated by flood water, or if, um, for example, you have a power outage and you do not have refrigeration services, your refrigerator is out, then over time, perishable items within the refrigerator will have to be discarded to prevent one from becoming sick and from developing um, these foodborne illnesses. Mm -hmm. So also having a proper storage of water. Water is very, very critical during flooding. Um, we consume a lot of it. So making sure that we either have bottled water stored or properly um, covered tanks that will not be um, contaminated during flooding is also very important. So these sort of steps are preventative and we need to also stock up on cleaning uh, materials for flooding and personal protective equipment. Make sure that we have gloves, we have proper boots, um, we have bleach in abundance um, and whatever other cleaning utensils that would be required so that post flooding and during flooding, we can use these items to keep our families safe. Right. You've mentioned during flooding, so we've gone through a bit of prep. What can we do when we are in the midst of a flood? Any tips there? So, so in the midst of a flood, first of all, you want to protect your physical environment. So certain appliances, for example, you want to unplug because you do not want your families being, um, you know, it's not just the microbiological dangers of flooding, but also one becoming electrocuted during flooding because of exposed outlets. So that is one area. The other thing is that during flooding, you want to make sure that you have a safe source of drinking water. Now, if you can boil water, then that is best. And you can bring water to a complete boil and then I'll leave it to stand for five minutes and then containerize it properly. Uh, if you have bottled water, that is fine as well. Make sure, however, if your bottled water has been contaminated on the outside with flood water, that you rinse them properly. We also can use um, non-tainted um, bleach, meaning bleach without any dyes or any added scents to disinfect water. Uh, the recommendation is usually around eight drops of um, household bleach to a gallon of water. And you can add that, leave it to stand for about 30 minutes, and then that water will have become decontaminated by the chlorine in the bleach. So that is one way of purifying water. The other thing is to look at food. It is important that we inspect our food carefully to make sure that it has not come into contact with flood water. And if it is, we have a saying, when in doubt, throw it out. So if you are doubtful as to the safety of that product, then discard it. Bearing in mind that food does cost, and for some families, especially in some rural areas, it's a major burden on them, the cost of food, but still you want to keep your family safe. So make sure and throw away as well fruits, vegetables, and other meats and so forth that 
may have come in contact with flood water. You may have food containers that will be safe. For example, canned foods and so on would be safe. But if their labels have been sogged, then you should remove that label, rinse them with portable water, and then store them properly so that they do not become further contaminated. That's good. Very doable. And as much as in the heat of the moment, we might be a little flustered, definitely things we could employ. Now, beyond the flood, after the damage is done, what do we need to do post? So post-flooding water tends to stagnate. So number one, we do not want to play or wade in that. We need to supervise our kids so that our children are not playing um, and exposing themselves to the pathogens that might be present in that flood water. We also want to remove as much uh, garbage from our area, remove pools of stagnated water as much that we can, bearing in mind that we need to protect ourselves while we're doing this cleaning. So wearing protective um, clothing, gloves, boots, masks, if they are needed, so that you employ these things prior to cleaning. It is good to make a disinfection solution using bleach. We recommend for cleaning one part bleach to 10 parts water. So one cup of bleach to 10 cups of water, and you can use that to um, sanitize your home. Remember that you need to remove as much dirt and stagnated water as possible. Bleach does not work well in the presence of high organic matter, meaning dirt. Uh, the chlorine binds onto dirt. So it's very important that we clean up all that dirt and debris that was left after flooding before starting. We always say clean and then disinfect. So you want to clean as much as possible, remove all the debris and the mud and slush that was left back from flooding, and then proceed to use this uh, sanitizing solution to mop, to wipe down, to clean your premises. Um, again, as I said, protect your water sources and protect your food sources and discard anything that you are in doubt about. Now, you're giving us a lot of information, all very useful, but we're probably going to need to revisit it. Where can we get all of these details and more? So the Ministry of Health has on its Facebook page and on its website most of these uh, warnings and most of these uh, advice right. that are posted in a poster form. So it's very important for us to look at it. And we can also, for example, um, post it in our community centers for those areas that are flooded. It is good to print copies of these. They are in printable format. Print out these posters, put it in areas to be as a reminder to the, the population, those at risk, to continue that. And we advise that you share and like our Facebook page and these pages as well. And you can put them up as your own social status on your own social media. You can download these uh, uh, images as, as pics, put them up on your WhatsApp status, put them up on your Facebook page so that you do your part in protecting others from the problems that can be, um, you know, public health concerns after flooding. Dr. Saheed Rahman, let me say thank you so much for joining us this morning, for giving us quite the list of things that we can do to protect ourselves and our families, even our communities, against the dangers of flooding. Thank you so much for having me and stay protected and keep, um, you know, posting our messages as well on your uh, TV station so that we, you know, do our part in protecting Trinidad and Tobago. Thanks again. Absolutely. That was Dr. Saheed Rahman, the Director of Veterinary Public Health in the Ministry of Health, giving us some pre, post and even during tips on how to navigate the dangers of floodwaters. We continue to keep you in the know here and now, right here on the Now Morning Show. We'll be back to these messages.
didn't die for us to live this life defeated. I understand where you are is, is hard. I understand that it has been a long season, but understand also that which has been made available to you to access the kingdom of God, to have access to the kingdom of God is to have access to God himself. So join me right here every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Be blessed. Today we are in Arima, all right, the corner of the Eastern Main Road and Becker's Lane. You all need to check it out. Natasha's Beauty Spa. So we're going to be chit-chatting with Natasha and, of course, her business associate, Miss Khalifa McAllister, the founder and, of course, the owner of Island Goddess Products. All right, now this is an interesting line of skincare that they're going to be interested in. Of course, my name is Junior K. You know what I mean? So we're going to have some fun. Understand the ladies. They're going to be probably giving someone a facial. Somebody just might get a massage. We're going to see who's getting their hair done or whatever the case may be. We are going beyond the headlines, asking the questions you want answered. Joining us this week is the Honorable Faris al Rawi. Minister of Rural Development and Local Government. Join us this Sunday at 7 p.m. on TTT, TTT Live Online and Talk City 91.1 FM. We are delving deeper. I'm Renee Sion with another edition of Caribbean Week in Review. Today, I want to say happy birthday going out to you. I hope that you have yourself a fantastic day today. Let me start with Miss General Fronten celebrating her uh, Mrs. Yes. I have to say Mrs. Yes. Get it right. But General Fronten celebrates her birthday <laughs> today. So, General, happiest of birthdays to you. I hope that you have a great day and a great weekend ahead. I know that you're going to enjoy it today, Max. And later this morning, we'll be chatting with one of your artists, but we'll have a whole other conversation All for right. another time. Let's, let's skip ahead a little bit, mm -hmm. like you just did, and celebrate tomorrow, because our very own Natasha Lake celebrates her birthday tomorrow. So, mm -hmm. Tash, happy birthday, girl, We started yesterday. Weekend. We started celebrating with her yesterday on nice. the show. We made sure we wish her happy birthday in person. But, of course, as it's Friday and her birthday is tomorrow, Tash, happiest of birthdays to you. Yeah, look, montage for Tash. You know. Well, look, trouble. I yeah. mean, they might as well. She does have a lot of pictures. Uh, but I want to know, I it's want to know easy. who was the person that put together I this montage. I do not care. I am celebrating her. I didn't see all this. And you know what? I actually also have another celebration. Before we go into the other birthdays, let me take the opportunity to celebrate my little cousin, technically. My cousin's child will be my cousin, yes? Let me do that after the birthdays, no? 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 Look, have some patience. I know you're excited. <laughs> <laughs> you cut Natasha birthday, you don't go on, don't get on, so... All right, so let me, let me just continue with the birthdays and then we'll get to the celebrations, right? Is that okay? Yeah, boy, Jesus and ages. All right, so celebrating a birthday on Sunday is Latoya Joseph Cummings, who is Rhea Matisse's sister, uh, one of our members of staff here, our floor coordinator this morning. So, uh, good morning Happy to you, birthday. Latoya. Happy birthday in advance. And now we can get into the celebrations, I think. 
Well, I also continue with the birthdays. Oh, okay. Because We're gonna today continue. <laughs> we do have a few people. July 1st, imagine the very beginning of the month. Do you celebrate any birthday? People be in bills. You're not going to get any gifts. <laughs> so we might as well say happy birthday going out to Tristan Palmer, who celebrates his birthday today. Uh, I know he's going to be very grand in his celebration, so I'll just leave it at that. Please be safe, sanitize, and physically distance. And to wrap things up in terms of the celebration, we will now celebrate persons who are re breathing a sigh of relief because those SEA results have been checked online. And I will start with my cousin, because he is my cousin's child, celebrating his uh, passing for Presentation College in San Fernando. So congratulations to you, Alex Michael Tao Young Villarreal. <laughs> I had to make sure. I real name. name boy. Yeah. Also because Alex is a very commonplace name. Yeah, I had to so make they sure make sure, sure you rest him. complicated. But I'm so proud of you. Not at all surprised to be quite true. <laughs> congratulations on a job well done. Congrats, and let me Alex. Add to that list. And let me also say congratulations going on to Nia Rodriguez, uh, who is uh, one of another member of staff here, Lisa Rodriguez's niece, and to all the other students who sat SEA and have received the results this morning. Congratulations to you. Um, whether you got your first, second, third, fourth choice, maybe you didn't get any of the choices that you wanted, but you don't know the path that's in store for you, so I'm saying congratulations to you once you get through the step, on to the next step. And that's how you continue with life, one okay. foot in front of the other, and you go be all right. That's sure about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so congrats to you. Now, I hope that the parents as well are celebrating just as much as the children, because like we were saying before, the nights that you spent up with them studying, the lessons that you picked them up and dropped them from. And you pay for. And the teachers who would have gone the extra mile with them as well, virtually and in person, hats off to each and every single one of them. Mm -hmm, yeah? mm -hmm. We celebrate it all this morning, at least virtually. And of course, when we come back, give you even more to celebrate, events to add to your calendar, things to look out for, and so much more on the Now Morning Show. Stick around, guys. Welcome to a special look at a truly amazing steel orchestra as Massey Trinidad All-Stars celebrates 85 years through the eyes of Panorama. My favorite Panama song from All Stars is Cory Tabanka. You can jump high, you can jump the Cory Tabanka. and Sparrow's Young Brigade. They say that is where true Calypsonians were made. Southern Brigade and Kitchener's Review. Calypso tent that had real pedigree too. Who could forget Calypso spectacular on Henry Street? Where true, true, true Calypso finds they would meet. To get you my political and social commentary. And they also gave your music to party. I love how bad, oh, I love how bad. Today we are in Arima, all right, the corner of the Eastern Main Road and Becker's Lane. You all need to check it out. Natasha's Beauty Spa. So we're going to be chit-chatting with Natasha and, of course, her business associate, Miss Khalifa McAllister, the founder and, of course, the owner of Island Goddess Products. All right, now this is an interesting line of skincare that you're going to be interested in. Of course, my name is Junior K. You know what I mean? So we're going to have some fun. Understand the ladies. They're going to be probably giving someone a facial. Somebody just might get a massage. We're going to see who's getting their hair done or whatever the case may be. We are going beyond the headlines, asking the questions you want answered. Joining us this week is the Honorable Faris Al-Rawi. Minister of Rural Development and Local Government.
Join us this Sunday at 7 p.m. on TTT, TTT Live Online, and Talk City 91.1 FM. We are delving deeper. Show because no stranger to this set is Mr. Emmanuel Joseph. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back. Thank you for having me again. And this morning he is joined by Miss Fayola Carr, the music teacher and band manager at the Holy Cross College. Yes, fine morning. Alumni and yes. teacher. You must be so proud, so, very. so, so very proud. <laughs> as we get ready to head over into a night on the hill, July 15th, Holy Cross is getting ready to give us the sweet sounds of Pan and more. Definitely. And I cannot wait. First of all, oh my goodness, thanks <laughs> for starting my Friday right. We love it. We love I wonder how many of our viewers actually could tell which song that was. Mm. Mm. Yeah, maybe we might... Uh, have a little quiz sometime in the near future and you could win tickets. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Definitely. But we're getting ready for the concerts. And I mean, we know it's towards raising funds for the school. We know yes. it's towards a good cause. But let's talk prep and what we can expect. Ms. Carl, what can we expect on the 15th of July? All right. So the concerts, in terms of prep, we've been prepping since February of this year. Oh, wow. Um, we started the band actually in December. And um, we started our practice sessions in February. Would that have been in person, virtual combinations? In person. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. When schools uh, reopened right. physically. Uh, so we've been prepping since then. And you can expect a fusion of music. Um, we're looking to cover classical, contemporary, a little bit of soca. Oh, boy. 
um, even some Latin and all. all so right. you can expect everything. Something for yeah. everybody, <laughs> as they like to say. Now, Emmanuel, you would yes. be head arranger, so that you were very much uh, instrumental, no pun intended, <laughs> in determining how some of these songs will sound. Definitely. That so process with students, challenging? It, it, it's a great process to be a part of. Miss Carr and I would have planned a repertoire, a mm -hmm. repertoire together, and I would have forecasted the show, okay. how the show is going to run, uh. as well as a lot of the music I would have arranged, as well. But we also have a lot of our young, talented arrangers in the school performing and doing music for the, the concert. So they are doing some arrangements. We're giving them that opportunity Lovely. to get into that arranging game yeah. and do songs for the band as well. That can be a game changer because Definitely. I'm sure you can attest to how that can transcend ju not just your space and time, but, you know, locations on a number of things. Of course, and that's exactly what the band is trying to do. Give mm -hmm. these young musicians, these young men at Holy Cross College the opportunity to, to not only perform, but to break into the arranging game, break into composition as well. So it's really what the purpose of the band is serving, giving, them, giving the young men the chance to succeed in the music fraternity. Nice. So this is a debut of sorts for the band, yes, isn't it? Is. it? it is. Their first performance, that is. Yes, it is. All right. And well, I don't want to drop the gun too much, but <laughs> we have more in the future, yes? Of course. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we, have, we plan to have this every year. So. Beyond Pan, though, we will be getting a number of instruments, a number of performances. We have What's vocalists, we have some spoken word. All of these are past students. Uh, we have some instrumentals like guitarists, keyboardists, and so on. So we're not just covering pan. Right. We're looking at everything. No bias. No <laughs> exactly bias. everybody covered. Yeah. Of course. And um, we even have a choir. Yes, we have, we have the, the school as a, a, yeah. a debut choir as well. Yeah. Okay. We have some featured performers like Jamie Garni, who is an uh, Jamie Garney, who is an, an amazing saxo saxophonist. Mm -hmm. We have a featured performer, which is also a past student, Mr. Marlon White, a steel pan soloist. Right. And we have big soca, big soca artist, Mr. Kim Bosozano, who is also a past student. Right, right. All there. the alumni coming out, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Definitely. It sounds like a night to remember. Definitely. Mm -hmm. An evening on the hill, mm -hmm. 15th of July. <laughs> so tell us about those tickets. How are we getting them? All right, so tickets are 100 for adults and 50 for children or okay. students of the school. Right. Um, you can source tickets at the school itself, or you can call 321-4859 to also get information on tickets. All right. Yes. Now, I know that the school also has their social media pages, and that's what yes. will we get a live stream, will we get those sort of opportunities, or you have to be we there? Have, we have plans to produce the music afterwards, oh, nice. but we want to, everybody to come at, right. at, at Family College, be there, present, because it's going to be an evening to remember, because the college is known for its view mm -hmm. of Trinidad and Tobago. So come on the hill, look at the country while listening to music but we have plans to record the music and put it out afterwards That's as well excellent definitely. So definitely something that i think most entities should look forward to because there's such great ca talent that everybody might be able to make it you want to <laughs> physically distance want to be safe but you definitely have to experience on the 15th of july so speaking of experience i want to make sure that we do a little bit more of that experiencing <laughs> and perhaps get another rendition on the plan of before course, we are uh, definitely skedaddle. so what i'm gonna up the tempo uh -huh. and up the vibes Ooh, i like it i like it it's <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. 15th of July. A night on the hill. Holy Cross College. So yeah, the sounds of the likes of Emmanuel Joseph and more.
<laughs> July 15th, we head to the hills for a nice on the hills as Holy Cross College gives you all that and much more, just like we will here on the Now Morning Show. We'll be back, guys. <laughs> Kingdom of the Wizards and the Sparrows Young Brigade. They say that is where true Calypsonians were made. Southern Brigade and Kitchener's Review. Calypso tent that had real pedigree too. Who could forget Calypso spectacular on Henry Street? Where true, true, true Calypso fans they would meet. They get you my political and social commentary. And they also give your music to party. I love how bad home, I love how bad. Great minds discuss ideas I learn from small. Small minds discuss people all day, that's all. So when they come all day and they disrespect, oh, oh, they're just exposing the size of their intellect. Tell them they could this, they could jump in me. Hit me with the negativity. I won't give up. Welcome to a special look at a truly amazing steel orchestra as Massey Trinidad All-Stars celebrates 85 years through the eyes of Panorama. My favorite Panorama song from All-Stars is Cory to banker. You can jump high, you can jump the quarry to banker. Today we are in Arima, alright, the corner of the Eastern Main Road and Becker's Lane. You all need to check it out. Natasha's Beauty Spa. So we're going to be chit-chatting with Natasha and of course her business associate, Miss Khalifa McAllister, the founder and of course the owner of Island Goddess Products. Alright, now this is an interesting line of skincare that they're going to be interested in. Of course, my name is Junior K. You know what I mean? So we're going to have some fun. Understand the ladies. They're going to be probably giving someone a facial. Somebody just might get a massage. We're going to see who's getting their hair done or whatever the case may be. Ravi B, the man with love in his heart and rum in his veins. Welcome to Pop. Love in my heart. Love rum in my heart. veins. Maybe. <laughs> I just flew in all the way from home by me. Trinidad. Trinidad. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a Trinidad dance hall. You look like an Apache. So this is called the Budo Strongman. The Budo Strongman. Yeah. For the worms. Remember, you can get this only from people who don't know what they're doing on pop.
by your side as long as there are stars in the sky and even though you're in darkness I'll be Alicia Bihari right here on the Now Morning Show this morning. Oh boy, what a way to get on this Friday. Eh? Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. How, How are you, you doing this morning? I'm great. How well, are you? Well, watch now. You wake up the place there just now. No? <laughs> All right. So you have a new series coming out called Femco. Tell me yes. about it. So Femco is a six show e event where it's aimed to the, the the whole aim of this tour is to create a stronger female presence in in the local pop rock scene so okay. we have about 13 fe female artists on on board mm -hmm. so every show is, is a different experience a, a different um lineup of, of of artists and they're all led by 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 female artists so there's only female artists in this whole run of shows six shows only female yes, artists yes. Uh, but live bands and everything yes only female musicians too um, or are we mixing up well, the musicians well yeah well we we, we, we call them al allies so. <laughs> <laughs> i hear you all right so tell me some of the artists that are, uh, will, be, will be performing in this series Okay, so well, I I can name the 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 one that's that's starting next week, the ninth of, of of July. That's our opening show at at the Big Black Box, um, where we're gonna have artists like like Skull Kid. That's a a, a new and an upcoming punk rock band. Mm -hmm. um, we are gonna have M Megan Gill, artists like Ray. We have some some. Upcoming artists like Candice Coca, um, Luna, J Giovanna, and some more experienced artists like my, myself. Mm -hmm. I'll be performing at, at two of the shows, the, right. the more hard rock stuff. <laughs> and um, we, we also have An Annalie Prime, who's right. he headlining. She falls the, into that, into that the, pop rock category? Well, I've extended it to, to folk and, and roots pop as well, okay. because that's all part of our, our culture. Right, too. right. Like yeah, I, I I love the the pop rock scene, but mm -hmm. I mean at, at the same time you you can't have one without the the other. Right? The balance is important. So, yeah. Why did you think that the series was necessary? Honestly, I I I really really wanted to see more of my my female friends making it too. Mm -hmm. So like I I'm just a, a huge music lover. I love the, the the entertainment scene. I've I've been performing since I, I was a kid and. It's always been a, a dream of mine to see not just myself, but all of my friends who are working just as hard out there doing what they're, they're meant to, to, to do. Yeah. Now, a lot of uh, artists who don't 
partake in or don't necessarily do like what we let me be real, right? So our culture is predominantly soca here in right. Trinidad and Tobago, right? So it's not the mainstream music that you're doing. What you're doing is different. These artists that you're calling, they're all doing music that is not our mainstream Calypso soca right. stuff, right? Uh, is it difficult, you think, to be successful in this genre that you're doing locally? Um, I have mixed re reviews about that because it really de depends on, on your target audience, right. too. And what, what I have found is, especially with the younger ge generation, the, the, the newer people that are coming in into the scene, they have shown and expressed a lot more interest in seeing more of this side of the, the, the music and industry here. Mm -hmm. so. All right. And you, you said that you're, well, you're making a space now for your peers to be able to... to a safe space. <laughs> a safe space for your peers to be able to shine. Uh, that process, is it very different from what you've been accustomed to doing in terms of, you know, recording, producing, writing music? And that's one aspect of the creative industries. Putting on shows is a whole other thing. Oh, yes. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> but honestly, I feel very grateful to have a great support system. Shout out to, to my femcore team. Um, I have a really, really wonderful su support system that... and. You, you know, and any gaps that I needed to fill in, they, they, they helped me with, with mm -hmm. that as well. So. All right. So tell me where, where people can go to get more information because it's six shows. I don't expect you to list out all and everybody go remember them now. I don't expect that to happen. So well, where yeah, can you go to all, stay updated? All, all you got to do, you, you can search on, on Instagram or, or Facebook. Mm -hmm. You search Femcore TT. That's F-E-M-C-O-R-E on Instagram. That's Femcore dot TT. And all the, the information is there, the, the venues, the dates, the, the artists line up, everything's there. As well as the co committee members, because we're, we're selling our, our tickets on, online. Right. But you can still pay fit physically in cash. You just have to approach a, a, a committee member and they mm -hmm. will do the, the online process for you. Okay, and you're saying it's $50 for the ticket? That's what you said just now? No. How much the tickets are? Um. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know where I heard that from. Where I heard that from? I don't know. Sorry. Wait, how much is that? You, 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 you're still waking up. Maybe. It's, I mean, I only had like one coffee this morning. <laughs> no judge me, okay? Well, how much are the tickets? <laughs> well, it, it varies for, for every show. Okay. So, for so example, the, first one is when? The, the, the opening show is, is this Saturday coming. That's the 9th of, of, of July, July at right. the Big, at Black, Big Box. Black Box. So those, those tickets go at $100. Okay. All right, so one hundred dollars next Saturday at the Big Black Box, and yes. who are, uh, you, you're performing in that one? I'm guest of a pairing. That's a performance, also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who else is in that one? Um, that's gonna be um, mostly sh showcasing Yasha of. Uh, oh, that's Yasha's pretty quattro. Yes, nice, the um, green, the little green she, quattro. She's, <laughs> she's de de debuting her, her band Skull Kid. Okay. So they've been doing a lot of performances. We we actually had. This whole thing started off when, when we did Ladies Rock Night in, in, in April. Okay. And I just wanted to, to see if people would come to an, an all-ladies kind of pop rock show with different types of, of rock mm -hmm. and with newer artists that needed more experience as well as a more experienced artist. And that went so, so, so well. We decided to, to go ahead with, with Femcore. Okay. And from, from then, even... Um, with with our bands as well, mm -hmm. we started gaining more recognition from that. Yasha started her band Skull Kid. We we have a, a, another artist. I I won't mention the, the the name yet. I will leave that for for her. Um, but she also put, performed that Ladies Rock Night and is forming her own band, which will be de debuted in in August. Right. So. But who else is in the show at, at the Black Box? It's just Yasha on on Skull Kid and that. There's Megan Gill. Right. There's Ray. Um, and there's uh, a, another in, indie band that, that just started gaining traction as well called Sea Bath. Really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if there's one thing I love about, about the pop rock scene is the names of the bands. Like, you get the wildest names, and I absolutely love to see it. Alicia, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning, and congratulations on this initiative. I think it's thank going to go Thank you, and thank very, you so much well. for, for having me. I'm really, really like, excited. Performing is something I've always wanted to do since I was a kid, and it's even more exciting to do it with my, my friends. Of so, course. Yeah. It's always better when you do it with friends. So, if you don't mind, give us another piece of that song before we take a break now. Sure. Yeah? All right. Side, right? Yes. Nice.
I'll stay by your side As long as there are stars in the sky And even though you're in darkness I'll be alive Life can sometimes be a mess I'll be right there to help you pick up the pieces Cause everyone knows the more you're alone The more you feel like it's the end Hush now Don't cry now You Benefit Concert, Saturday, 9th July at O2 Park, Shagaramas. The Giants of Trinidad and Tobago on one on stage. One stage. Come and celebrate with us as we celebrate life and give thanks for the music. Are we going down like kitty kill, kitty kill, kitty kill, kitty kill, kitty kill? We have a style like kitty kill, kitty kill, kitty kill. Yes, the band. You want to know where we coming from? Say you want come look for me, yeah. If you're willing to have some fun, I will keep you company. Staying alive, the benefit concert. There is nowhere else in the world you could see all of these giants on one stage. Guess the band: Michelle Montano, Freetown Collective, Three Canal, Orange Sky, plus many more artists to be announced. Tickets available online at islandetickets.com. All Hagen Dazs outlets nationwide and Ojo World. Saturday, 9th July at O2 Park. Mark Shagaramas, conquering all the obstacles. Staying alive, the benefit concept. All right, so it's almost time for us to wrap up here at the Now Morning Show. Well, it's actually time for us to wrap up on behalf of Ayanka, Will, and myself. Uh, I mean, on behalf, I'm ready. Right sorry, well, fine. Go ahead and do your thing. Get big out here. Again, show. congratulations to all of the students who would have been asked. Uh, you know, reveling in the moment that the Everybody who received are. results this morning. And specifically, um, actually, Ari, one of our fellow Next 99 DJs, who's also a teacher, is saying the first time in decades there is no queue outside of the school. Well, because and, you know, I never online. thought of that. Right. Yeah. But we never thought about that actual moment. We yeah, usually yeah, yeah. see the parents out there sweating. <laughs> so, you all are home, clicking and 
I guess sure. Yeah, man. So congratulations, congratulations one time to all of the students receiving SEA results today. Mm -hmm. Whatever the results are, accept them with grace and go forward knowing that you can take the next best step. Right? All you have to do is the next right thing, according to that animation movie. Just do the next right thing, right? Ladies and gentlemen, go out there and make a difference today now because together we aspire. Together, and together we, achieve. we achieve. Happy Friday, guys. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Bye. Welcome to a special look at a truly amazing steel orchestra as Massey Trinidad All-Stars celebrates 85 years through the eyes of Panorama. My favorite Panorama song from All-Stars is Cory Tabanka. You can jump high, you can jump the Cory Tabanka. Today we are in Arima, all right, the corner of the Eastern Main Road and Becker's Lane. You all need to check it out. Natasha's Beauty Spa. So we're going to be chit-chatting with Natasha and, of course, her business associate, Miss Khalifa McAllister, the founder and, of course, the owner of Island Goddess Products. All right, now this is an interesting line of skincare that you're going to be interested in. Of course, my name is Junior K. You know what I mean? So we're going to have some fun. Understand the ladies. They're going to be probably giving someone a facial. Somebody just might get a massage. We're going to see who's getting their hair done or whatever the case may be. It's all Good morning. Welcome to TTT News. I am Roxanne Suraj, making the news at this time. Discussions covering a range of topics, including agriculture and agro-processing between Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago, were held following a recent meeting with the Trinidad and Tobago delegation, led by Minister of Youth Development and National Service, Foster Cummings, and President of Guyana, Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali. Also included in the talks with the Vice President, Dr. Bharat Jagdeo, and Minister of Agriculture, Zulfika Mustafa. The focus of the discussions was intended for a key focus to be placed on youth in agriculture, also leading to future collaborations between both countries on regional food security. President Dr. Ali made a commitment to work with Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley to ensure that these initiatives come to fruition in the shortest possible time frame. Minister Cummings was joined by ministers in the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries, Avinash Singh, and Senator Nigel De Freitas. Let the process take its course. So says Minister of National Security Fitzgerald Hines in response to the revelations by the Police Complaints Authority regarding investigations into the fatal shooting of Police Constable Clarence Jilks in April. During Thursday's post-Cabinet media briefing, Minister Hines explained what the process entails following the PCA's report. Typically, it would either make a report to the police commissioner depending on the level of the misconduct it found or it would report to the director of public prosecutions depending again on the level of the thing it finds and well it's part of the process and um, once that file is sent to the DPP it will then fall to the B DPP to cast his professional gaze upon it and then it would be taken from there. In a media release issued on Thursday morning, the PCA revealed scathing findings against police officers of the Western Division in relation to the April 22nd fatal shooting of 44-year-old PC Clarence Jilks. 
It concluded that members of the police abused their power and deliberately misled the acting commissioner of police. The release added that evidence revealed that police officers shot at an unarmed civilian and PC Jilks became an unintended target. It said scientific evidence gathered showed PC Jilks was shot by one of his fellow officers. In other news, 118 additional people have tested positive for COVID-19 in Trinidad and Tobago. Those results were from samples taken between June 28th and June 29th. The total number of active positive cases stands at 6,320. And one middle-aged female and one young adult male died from COVID-19 complications in the past 24 hours. Their deaths take the COVID-related death toll to 4,011. Switching to sports. The fight against cancer got a boost recently with the inaugural Robert Ballack Memorial Charity Golf Tournament hosted at the Point of Pier Golf Club. 35 two-person teams hit the greens for the tournament which was organized with two main goals in mind. To honor the late Robert Ballack through the game he loved and to support the fight against cancer. Golfing veterans Tommy Boodoo and Carlton Singh were in fine form and took first place with 44 points. The competition was closely contested and Kevish, Ramnath and Dwayne Ramlal followed in second place with 43 points, while Dr. Avin Ali and Amir Ali came in third place with 41 points. The Robert Balak Memorial Charity Golf Tournament was able to raise and donate $65,000 to the Trinidad and Tobago Cancer Society. And that was the latest News City Hour. I am Roxanne Suraj. Do have a great Friday. This is TTT. Live for local. The best way to get are at thebesttoys.com. Shop for the best brands you love at the best prices. Like VTEC. Leapfrog, Fisher Price, Play Doh, Hot Wheels, Bobby, Coco Melon, LOL, Baby Alive, Crayola, Lego, Nerf, and Remote Control Vehicle, Kids Learning Desk, and Educational Toys, Ride Ons, Bikes, Drones, Science Toys, and Board Games and Puzzles, and a wide range of baby items. We also have the best devices for school, like laptops, the Amazon Fire 7 tablet, the Amazon Fire 8, 10, and Kids Edition tab, as well as cases and accessories. Visit us in store at Forces Flagship Mac Bean. Shop online now at dbesttoys.com. No credit card required. Free delivery throughout Trinidad and Tobago on orders over $300. Cash or links on delivery. Order via call or WhatsApp at 32 dbest to order. And remember, we have the best toys at the best prices.